This message contains an amazing revelation from the Lord. I'm producing this video quickly because I believe there is a timing to this. As always, I'm here not on my own merit, but to serve the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I just share what I believe I hear from the Holy Spirit and not my own thoughts. We are at a time, as you will learn from this message again, where debate and hating one another are the next plague coming into the body of Christ. And so I'm inviting and pleading with you to abandon the debate. This is a time to help your brothers and sisters, not to try to find faults in them, not to try to condemn them, but to lead them to the truth. And most importantly, to focus on those who are not saved. And that will be the best use of your time to intercede, pray for the lost, and share the gospel with anyone who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ. So please abandon the debate. Please abandon attacking your brothers and sisters and use your time to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as I said, these are two messages combined. One message you already heard from the previous series, which I encourage you to go and watch, which will help understand the series even further. And then there's the second message which confirms and further tells us more meaning about what you're about to see. So the first message I heard on 3.8.23 at 10.27 p.m. Again, this message is present in the previous series. Your forgiven son write that I come quickly. At lightning speed, in quotes, not according to man. For the foolishness of their heart does not let them comprehend what matters? Right, son, the time comes when the sun will be darkened and the moon like sackcloth. It is my blood which washes, not of works. Repent now, right, son, for time is no more. I come quickly. Repent now, son, I say, Repent now. I am at the door. You have done well, son. Now go. It is late. I love you, your father, Lord Jesus, Yeshua, Abba. Amen. The second message came on April 6, 2023 at 1.16 p.m. Fear not, son. I am with you. And, in parenthesis, Nothing can touch you. You are in the palm of my hands. I love you, son. You have done well. Fear not. The deceiver is active and nothing can stop him until my return. Fear not. And truth belongs, all truth belongs to me. And yet, in parenthesis, deception reigns rampant. Fear not, son, I am with you. Yellowstone will erupt at the appointed time, for I speak all truth. Do not fear, son, now go, son, fear not. I am with you. In parenthesis, I say, all glory to the Lamb of God who was slain for the sins of the world. I love you, son, Lord Jesus, Yeshua, Abba, Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's get directly into this teaching. This is incredible material. I want you to pay attention because it really unlocks a lot of the questions that we've been having and organizes the timeline in ways that are absolutely incredible. So the chapter 24, Matthew, is so well known, of course, we all know about it. And it all talks about the tribulation and whatnot. But there are keys that allow us to finally understand how to put together in the correct sequence what the Lord himself with his words is saying and the order of events through the pre-tribulation and the tribulation itself. So notice that the Lord will repeat a certain um, words and one is the word coming. 
Okay, that will come up a few times in this the coming of the Son of Man. In particular, is verse 27 and then in verse 37, which we'll see later, and finally in verse 39. And I had a full teaching on that already. So we know that that is connected to the rapture. But the second repetition of words that the Lord uses is the word deceive. And this is so important, so critical. Why? Because he uses this word deceive three times in verse 4, in verse 11, and in verse 24, technically 23 as well. But the actual word is in the verse 24. So notice that the first time that the word deceive appears is this verse 4. And it's at the very beginning after they asked him, the disciples asked him, what shall be, when shall it be in verse uh, three, when shall it be the these things and the sign of your coming and the end of the world. That's verse three. And so in verse four, immediately the Lord says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Okay. And then immediately after says verse five, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Okay. So this is this idea of verse four, where the Lord is giving us a key and the key is deception. So immediately after that, he goes straight into the description of what we know being the beginning of sorrows. And this is verses six through 10 right and we we know those very well and those are kingdom against kingdom wars rumors of war earthquakes famine pestilence etc all the way to verse 10 which we'll come back to in a minute so it seems like there is some form of disconnection or at least there is a key in understanding that verse 4 is almost a key where the lord says when i'm gonna use this word deceive again to take it and understand that that is going to be referring to a particular period of time. So let's go ahead and see when he uses the word deceive again. That's in verse 11. So in verse 11, the Lord says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Okay. Now he already said that in verse four, but how come we, this says that it happens after the beginning of sorrows. If it happens after the beginning of sorrows, what the Lord is saying, it cannot happen before, have the beginning of sorrows, and then happen the same thing again. What he's saying is that the first verse, verse 4, is the key to learn that verse 11, when verse 11 comes, we're going to know that now we are in a second stage after the beginning of sorrows. So notice that then immediately after verse 12, it says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, 13, but either shall endure until the end. Endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And then 14, and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the world, in all the world, and then the, el the end shall come. So it's saying that after deception, when deception happens, okay, then we're going to move into the end portion, the so called tribulation. So now, notice that then verse 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 talk about the end and talk about what? In verse 15, the abomination of desolation, spoken by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place. We know that from 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 6. So this after happens after the deception. So verse 4 gives us the key. Say, pay attention. When I say deception, you're no longer before the tribulation or in the tribulation. So verse 11 is now saying, look, all of this deception and then all of this happens, right? But then what happens? We get all the way down to verse 22, and then we're again in verse 23 and 24. And verse 24 says again, For there shall arise false, false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall what? Deceive the very elect. So how is it possible that this deception, which happened already in verse 11 and was mentioned in verse 4, comes back after all this? It's because it's not coming after is because the Lord is saying, when I use the word deception, line up the verses and the events that follow so that you know that when I say deception, anything that falls, falls after, it's going to be tribulation. Meaning that the word deceive or deception is the key to line up 
three times, see, I'm going to repeat it, to line up that after the deception comes the tribulation. That takes us all the way to verse 26, okay? And so, again, it's talking about, the Lord is talking about the deception. It takes us to a point where in verse 26 it says, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers. Believe it not. It's saying, deception means you are in the tribulation. This is how we jump to verse 27, because this is the first time that the Lord switches and instead talks out, almost out of, out of sequence, which of course we know it's not. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. It's saying this is going to be out of the blue, instantaneous. You cannot predict it. So how would you not be able to predict it if you already know you're in the tribulation? You should be expecting it. He's saying, look, at verse 27, I'm talking about the coming of the Son of Man, which is the rapture. Now, that's why in the message of 328, the message came at 1027. Why? Because the last verse of the before the tribulation is verse 10. And that's where we're in now. And he says, and then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. That's exactly what's happening now with the hate between the brothers and the uh, miscommunication and the coming one against the other. This is happening now. The Lord is saying, you're in verse 10. The next verse is going to be verse 27. And verse 27 is the rapture. So verse 28 is the famous, famous verse that says, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So go back to the Samson story to understand that that's what the Lord is talking about. Which then means that the Lord talks in verse 29, which is right down here. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. That was also in the message where the Lord says the moon is sackcloth and the sun is not giving light. And the star shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, not the coming, but the sign. And then shall all tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. This is the second coming. So notice, the Lord gives us the key. Deception, verse 4, I'm going to tell you about deception, then pay attention, verse 11, and verse 23 and 24, which really reads like 4, 11, and 23 or 24, and then it's the tribulation, and then is after the tribulation, the second coming, which leaves us to identify and know that the verse 27, which talks about the coming, is before all this, and it happens immediately after the beginning of sorrows. So notice that then verses 32 and on switch completely gear. Let's pay attention. Why? Because in verse 32, the Lord now switches gear completely and takes and talks about the parable of the fig tree. And then he talks about the knowing when he is at the door. And then he talks about that we don't know the day and the hour. And we've done a teaching on that because the Lord revealed the wisdom through that. And then he talks about the days of Noah and the people were eating and drinking. In other words, this entire block, 32 all the way to 51, this entire block, 32 to 51, is the description of the rapture. Why? Because the Lord just says, look, I'm going to show you. Deceive, deceive, deceive. I'm talking about tribulation. Then I'm going to say after tribulation is the second coming. So when I'm saying, when I'm talking about the coming of the Son of Man, that all thing, which is all the rapture, all of that thinking, all of the parable, the fig tree, all of it is the rapture. And he spends a lot, a lot of his verses and words to tell us that the rapture is what it is, when it is, and we've done full teaching of that, and most importantly, that is connected to exactly what? To the end of the beginning of sorrows, which is last verse will be verse 10, and immediately after that is verse 27. Why? Because it's going to come at a time where people are eating and drinking, not when there is a time of a tribulation never seen before that will never happen again, people will not be eating and drinking. They will simply be trying to survive. So I invite everybody to do this study on your own. Go into Matthew 24 and literally cut and paste the verses where the Lord says, deceive. Okay, pay attention that no one deceive you. Take those three verses 
and then line up the rest of the scripture based on that and understand that there is no other way to understand this chapter but to put it exactly the way that the Lord revealed it, which is beginning deceive. Verse 4 is the key, which comes back in verse 11 and 23 and 24. And then verse 27 talks about the coming of the Son of Man, not the sign of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of Man. Okay, that it comes then immediately after the last verse of the pre-tribulation, which is verse 10. And then from verse 32 all the way to verse 51 is all about the rapture spoken directly by the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is an incredible revelation. He talks about the timing of the rapture, but most importantly, where we are at in the process. I really want you to understand this concept. And so you're going to have to sit down with the gospel with matthew 24 and do the same exercise that the lord show me yourself you're gonna have to look at those verses deceive 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 organize the sequence of events and, and understand that they cannot the lord is not repeating himself it's just allowing us to see the order and sequence of things i will be posting this calendar in the description box with a link to the dropbox and i'll put it in the community post so they can print it out and study yourself we are at this time where everybody is focusing on correcting your brothers and sisters instead of sharing the Gospels with those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Abandon the debate and instead spend your time praying, seeking the Lord and sharing the Gospel with others, understanding and sharing with others that the time is short because the Lord is showing us all that we need to do in order to be prepared for His return. There is still possibly some time, and that time has to be used for his glory and not for our merit. I will be back. The Lord is teaching more things that we are supposed to know before the time of his return, which is extremely close. Please go and study the calendars. And But in this last bit of time that we're left, there is a switching in focus. And I'll be talking about, because the Lord has put that on my heart to explain that, I'll be talking about this in the next series. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name.